Welcome back. A Pakistani man with ties to Iran charged with plotting to assassinate former President Trump. The Department of Justice says this has no ties to the attack at Trump's rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. I sat down with former President Trump last week in Bedminster, New Jersey, at his golf club, right before he was going to be interviewed by the FBI about the assassination attempt on his life. I met the AG, uh, FBI agents that were there. He told me that the shooter in Butler could have foreign ties as well. Watch. I think it's being reported that this kid maybe wasn't quite as innocent as people think. He had some encryptions that may be foreign-based, and they can't open up the app. They can't open up his phone, another way of saying it, because, as you know, Apple controls that. They can open it, but nobody else can. And, you know, when it comes to assassination attempts, I think you're going to have to be able to open up a phone. So they're going to have to see if that happens. But we're hearing that they may have three situations where they can't get access to the information. You can't have that happen. So are you thinking maybe this was a foreign adversary? I have no idea. I'm just saying what's been reported and what I heard. What do you think happened that day? Can you tell us a little about Well, I would say that he's just a very disturbed young man. It would seem that he might be uh, liberally based, okay, or progressive, as the expression goes. Joining me now is Florida Congressman Brian Mast, member of the House Foreign Affairs and Transportation and Infrastructure Committees. He's also a U.S. Army veteran, a recipient of the Bronze Star and Purple Heart Medals. Congressman, thanks very much for all of your service to our great nation. Thanks for being here. Always glad to. Uh, what is your reaction to what you just heard? Which it, It's still a question as far as why we don't know more information about these assassination attacks. Yeah, unfortunately, every single day since July 13th, we all come away with more questions about not just what were the origins of the attacks, but how was any attacker, whether foreign-based or otherwise, able to get so close to President Trump? All of these security failures for what is supposed to be the gold standard of dignitary protection. Is there certainly a potential that this could be tied to Iran or someone else? Absolutely. And that makes one of those really big questions. Why? Because everybody knows that President Trump, Mike Pompeo, Anybody else that was a part of killing that Iranian Revolutionary Guard leader, Qasem Soleimani, is forever and for the rest of their life on a highly targeted list by Iran for, for any assassin, for an, an assassination attempt. So why wasn't the security hired? That question always has to yeah, exist. Yeah, it's a great question. Also, there's a question around China, and I want to get your take on this. Our number one adversary, Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate, Tim Waltz, has been praising China. He uh, lived there for a year. He was teaching there for a year. He visited the country about 30 times. He even honeymooned in China. Walsh even speaks a small amount of Mandarin and ran a business taking students to China. In 2019, Walsh called for President Trump to end his trade war with China, claiming that it was hurting U.S. farmers. And then in 2016, Walsh said this, I don't fall into the category that China necessarily needs to be an adversarial relationship. Congressman, your thoughts on uh, the vice presidential pick on the Democrat side and his ties and uh, relationships in China. There's so much about him that's concerning to me. One of the statements that wasn't brought up just now about his ties to China, as he was bringing in people into China for these exchange programs, his message to them was, downplay your Americanness. That's not something I ever want to hear from somebody that is vying to be vice president of the United States, maybe potentially president of the United States someday. Downplay your Americanness. Try to take on more of a Chinese role. It should be the exact opposite of what's going on. That wasn't his role. One of the other things, major concern about this individual, I don't know if you're going to talk about, you know, he was in the military. He lost his rank as command sergeant major. Why? Because he decided he was going to choose Congress over combat. That's something no warrior that I know would ever do. Yeah, Very I want to talk individual. I want to talk about that. Uh, but but let me just close the loop on China here, because when he's running this business that is doing exchange of students, the U.S. and, and, and China, is it not true? I mean, and you're on the Foreign Affairs Committee, but is it not true that Communist China has used many students uh, to exploit the visa process uh, to actually become surveillance tools for the Communist Party uh, of China? Over and over and over again in Ivy League universities to community right. colleges, this is something that's taking place. They're exploiting that visa program. And the schools want this in many parts. Why? Because the Chinese Communist Party are sending these individuals in as, let's call them, cash-paying, uh, tuition cash-paying individuals. So they're just welcoming them in with open arms. And again, just to go back to that point, 
anybody that's that's a part of that conversation should be getting Americanized, not being told, hey, Americans, you downplay your Americanness. That can't be the yeah, path. Yeah, no wonder there's all this propaganda on TikTok about how great he is. Uh, but let me get back to the military, which you just brought up. Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz accused of stolen valor. Three retired command sergeant majors have accused Walsh of retiring from their Minnesota National Guard uh, just before their deployment to Iraq in 2005. They also said that he misrepresented himself as a command sergeant major, despite his retirement causing him to lose the promotion. Watch this. He abandoned us. You know, I mean, what the hell kind of leader does that? I mean, he just, as soon as the shots were fired in Iraq, he turned and ran the other way and hung his hat up and quit. As far as I know, he's the only one that has bailed in a senior position and then used that 10 minutes and no credibility to hold that position, no experience, to somehow bolster his, his credibility in Congress. And even his webpage lays claim that at the time when he retired, he was the senior non-commissioned officer in Southern Minnesota. Hello, Tom Barron's lives in Minnesota, southern Minnesota, in his district. Um, I think Tom Barron's was a sergeant major at the time. Congressman, you are a U.S. Army veteran, uh, the recipient of the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart. Uh, your thoughts on, on, on this individual uh, in terms of what this says about the ticket? I don't say these words lightly at all. If you leave your men, your soldiers, your women, whoever they are under your command, command Sergeant Major under his command, if you leave them on the heels of combat, that is an act of cowardice. That is not an act of leadership. It is not an act of somebody that may potentially wear the, the title of commander in chief one day. You cannot have those two running together. Well, at all. It, it breaks my heart to hear that those were, that's what his soldiers were saying about Yeah, him. I mean, look, there are questions all morning long, really, uh, about uh, why Kamala Harris would double down on a progressive agenda by choosing him. But I guess Josh Shapiro, who many people expected to get the role, uh, was Jewish, and she was afraid to lose that Palestinian vote. Is that the yeah, way you I've see it? I've heard that part of it. And you know, to bring a little joke into this, I've heard people calling him Tampon Tim, because why? He was a progressive mm. individual that wanted to put tampons in boys' locker rooms in the schools as governor. He's a progressive governor. These are the kind of policies that he's taking place. So it makes perfect sense why he's being chosen by the Biden administration, or by the Harris administration, because they are just a continuation of the extremism of the Biden administration, and maybe even were the ones that were in charge of the Biden administration during all of these debacles that we've seen from yeah. the Afghanistan withdrawal, certainly the southern border. They're trying to downplay that she was the border czar. The list goes on and on. Yeah. Uh, real quick before you go, do you have anything to say about the state of our military today, given this most recent uh, national defense report that I if we were to see a conflict with China and Russia, uh, that the U.S. would be on the losing end of things? We have outstanding service members, and we have some really good leaders. I served under the command of our current CENTCOM commander. Uh, we have some great leaders, but our military has to have the backing of the commander-in-chief, whoever that is, yes. that they're, they're not going to be hung out to dry. You can't have these situations where their paychecks are just being dwindled by inflation. You have to make the human beings more important than the hardware if you want to have the strongest possible military. Sure. Makes perfect sense. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you, sir. Meta said that the picture wasn't altered. It, at first they said it was altered, and then they said, no, it was a bug, so it was a mistake. So my, my point is, is right. these companies would not allow any information yeah. out about what happened. So Mark Zuckerberg called me. First of all, he called me a few times. He called me after the event, and he said that was really amazing. It was very brave. And, you know, and he actually announced he's not going to support a Democrat because he can't because he respected me for what I did that day. I think what I did maybe was a norm. To me, it was a normal response. But I was called by Mark Zuckerberg yesterday, the day before, on this same subject. And he actually apologized. He said they made a mistake, et cetera, et cetera, and they're correcting the mistake. Uh, Google, nobody called from Google. I know that a lot of Silicon Valley types got behind you after the assassination attempt on your yeah. life. I, and, of course, That's Elon true. Musk was supportive before that. And then, just over the last two weeks, we see what happened with Google and, and Meta. Uh, Google search bar would not bring up results of the shooting. Um, their AI tool would not even give any information about it. Meta's AI tool said that the shooting was fictional. Uh, Facebook labeled photos of you pumping your fist as uh, as altered. You still have a major problem with big tech, don't you? 
So AI is very complex. It's got tremendous potential, but it also has potential to destroy. And they actually had one of the pictures with everything the same, except they have all of the Secret Service agents around me who are great people, very brave people, because they ran into that fire. Those bullets were going right over my head. And I heard them going, they were moving along. And these people were jumping on top of me. There wasn't one of them that was slow moving or they, you saw them. They didn't care. They were jumping on top of me. As fast as I was down, they were on top of me. They were very brave. And when I got up, you know, you see the faces. They were not happy. They were angry and they were looking around. Uh, They actually have one picture where the Secret Service is all smiling. They're laughing as they're protecting me. I have the same, same hand up, everything else. And then it's AI. It's a very dangerous thing. You've got to be, we've got to be very careful with artificial intelligence. Well, Meta said that the picture wasn't altered. At first they said it was altered, and then they said, no, it was a bug. So it was a mistake. Mark Zuckerberg, so my, my point is, is right. these companies would not allow any information yeah. out about what happened. So Mark Zuckerberg called me. First of all, he called me a few times. He called me after the event, and he said that was really amazing. It was very brave. And, you know, and he actually announced he's not going to support a Democrat because he can't because he respected me for what I did that day. I think what I did maybe was a norm. To me, it was a normal response. But I was called by Mark Zuckerberg yesterday, the day before, on this same subject. And he actually apologized. He said they made a mistake, et cetera, et cetera, and they're correcting the mistake. Uh, Google, nobody called from Google. One of the things, like doing a show like yours, you your show, you know, you see it on Fox. But what you really see it is all over the place. They take clips of your show that you're doing right now with me. And if I do a good job, they're going to vote for me. They're going to vote for me because it's not just on Fox. It's on Fox is a smaller part of it. You're on all over this, those little beautiful cell phones. You're on, you're all over the place. You have a product. You have a great product. You have a great brand. So you have to get out. You have to get out. You have to do things like your show and other shows. And Google has been very bad. They've been very irresponsible. And I have a feeling that Google is going to be close to shut down because I don't think Congress is going to take it. I really don't think so. Google has to be careful. Now, I will say this. I believe Mark Zuckerberg, he called me, so, he called me a lot. They are working, on, and I think they fixed it. But what could and he's do not doing this? what he did four years ago with the $500 million, I don't believe. Uh, the Zuckerbucks. Yeah, and he's not endorsing a Democrat, which is the first time in his life that he hasn't done. Are you going to encourage that their liability protection is removed, should you return? Well, it's in Congress now, and when I look at some of the parents who have been absolutely destroyed by it, that's okay with me. I think you have to do something. I do think it's a very slippery slope. I think it's very hard to do. I mean, they're going to have to go through every tweet, or they're going to have to go through every single thing that happens, like in the case of Elon. And Elon's doing a good job. Elon endorsed me very strongly. And... What about TikTok? He's got a good good insight into this whole mess that we're in. What do you mean? Elon, Elon Musk. I think he's got... I found him to be very interested, his view on the whole situation with should we have restrictions. And I think he wants certain restrictions. But it gets to be... You know, look, it's a very complicated subject. It's freedom of speech. It's a whole thing. But when you see some of these kids being, you know, committing suicide over false things that are put out over these these platforms, I will say that Jeff Bezos, who I didn't really know, called me, and he said that picture is gonna is one of the most important pictures in the history of our country. And he was very nice, even though he owns the Washington Post. Okay, you know, and, uh, we had a long talk, but he said I was I was glued to my television for longer than I've ever been glued to my television. So all these people called you after the assassination They all called me and they said, thank you. They actually thanked me. Nobody from Google did, but Jeff Bezos did, Mark Zuckerberg did, Elon does. I mean, Elon's a friend of mine. Elon gave me the strongest endorsement. You know, Elon is not somebody to endorse if he doesn't believe in you. Then he gave me the strongest, and I'm not so great on his electric cars, think of it. It's not like I'm saying, oh, let's go all electric, because he understands that, that system won't work. That will actually end up hurting the electric car.